Sprint is back in Halo Infinite. You either love it, you hate it, or you don't care. It's a very controversial topic. One thing I'll say just off of first glance, just looking at it, it doesn't look that interesting though, I'll say. Like, it looks bland, something about it. And how do you realistically revolutionize the way that Sprint looks? But whenever I think of sprinting looking cool, I think back to that cutscene in Halo 2 Anniversary where the Chief is running. I don't know if you guys remember that. I just always thought that moment looked badass. Like, maybe if Chief was one arm carrying the AR as he sprinted, that would look cooler. I, I don't know. Either way, what matters most is how will this affect multiplayer? How will this affect skill gap? And to answer that question, let's take a trip back in time 10 years. If you were to ask me whether or not Sprint adds to Halo's multiplayer skill gap using either Reach or Halo 4 as examples, then I would tell you with confidence that it doesn't. Why is that? Well, lots of reasons. Let's sprint around. First of all, just by pressing Sprint, you get an almost almost instantaneous boost in speed forward. So you go from walking speed to sprinting speed very fast. Like I'm right into sprinting speed. On top of that, there's a very annoying breathing noise. This is just a reach thing. He just starts breathing. That's It's not a mechanic. It's just like, why? Why is he breathing the instant that he's sprinting? Anyway, also when you're sprinting, the game like slows down your horizontal sensitivity and makes it harder to turn around. And maybe this is supposed to be like a balancing mechanic, so it's harder to escape or maneuver with it, but it just makes the sprint feel super cumbersome, like I'm moving through molasses or something. It's really weird. And this is only exclusive to controller. On mouse and keyboard, it doesn't affect your horizontal sensitivity. So you can just spin on a dime on mouse and keyboard and completely break this system, by the way. Want to sprint away from a gunfight? Done. Literally just nice, quick and easy 180. And on top of this almost instant boost in speed that you get from sprinting, there isn't really a lot of stopping power as well. So if I throw a grenade at this wall and then sprint through it, if I take light damage, there's no stopping power whatsoever. I can just keep sprinting. If I take heavy damage, what, what will happen is it knocks me out of sprint but I can sprint again almost instantly after. So there isn't really anything stopping me from just mashing sprint when I take a lot of damage. And the last, and in my opinion, most frustrating thing about sprint, and this is consistent in Reach and Halo 4, is the amount of time it takes to shoot out of it. It puts your gun down and it's so hard to fire a damn shot. Like I'm, I'm mashing the trigger out of sprint right now. And it just takes me so long to fire a shot out of it. And for some reason, the melee isn't affected by this. I can melee out of sprint and cancel into sprint instantly. There's no time delay for this. So in a nutshell, what this tells me is that this mechanic is good for getting from point A to point B, for escaping gunfights. If I'm in trouble, I can run away and there's not a lot of stopping power to stop me from running away. It's bad for combat, so I shouldn't be using this in a gunfight because it takes a very long time to shoot out of it, so it's not good in a gunfight. So really, I'm just using it to run away and escape and to get places faster, uh, unless I'm trying to melee somebody. I can run into their face and hammer them or sword them, which is also like just as annoying. So either you can run up at somebody and melee them in the face, because shooting is bad, or you can run away from a gunfight, which all of that is just terrible for gameplay, right? And this is why maps feel like they need to be artificially extended, because you can get somewhere faster with a sprint, but then when you actually get there faster, you're just using your regular mechanics again. It's just a regular strafing, jumping, shooting, gunfight, because if you're sprinting in the gunfight, it's not going to help you. And honestly, I believe these are the main reasons why people still hate Sprint today. If Sprint was still like this, I would still hate Sprint. It deserves to be hated because it was terrible in Reach in Halo 4. But let's take a look at Halo 5 real quick because things have changed here. First of all, sprinting does not give you an instant boost in speed forward. It's a gradual boost in speed up to a top speed that's achieved when you see the reticle brackets appear on screen. So sprinting, now I'm at full speed. Now I'm at full speed, right? So it takes time to go from a starting point to full speed. During that startup, you're very vulnerable as well. If you get shot during the startup, you go into either a cripple state or you completely get knocked out of sprint entirely. And it depends on how close you are to full sprint speed when you get shot or how many times you get shot. Right here, you'll see I get shot a couple times and then I'm, I'm completely knocked out of sprint and now I can sprint again. And then in this next example, I get shot a couple times and I'm sent to a cripple where I'm, I'm moving at a slow speed for a brief amount of time until I can finally start moving again at full speed. So depending on how many times you get shot, 
shot, how early you get shot, you get different results. And if you start sprinting while your shields are down, your shield recharge timer, this yellow bar, is reset and put on hold until you stop sprinting. You'll see now that I've stopped, now it's starting to recharge again. So this ensures that unless your opponent is missing their shots, you can't just run away from a gunfight. And if you do choose to run away, then good luck getting your shields back immediately. I can also spin around in circles without having my horizontal sense slowed down by the mechanic. Just a nice quality of life improvement. I have full flexibility over my reticle and I can use it like I would normally. What's even better is you can now shoot instantly out of sprint as well. No longer am I putting my weapon down when I sprint. I have full access to my gun. All I have to do is pull the trigger and I can shoot instantly out of sprint. Also note that the time to shoot at a sprint depends on the weight of weapon as well. So the BR, for example, which is a heavier weapon, will shoot slower out of sprint than the Magnum. It's still much faster than Halo Reach or Halo 4, but it's a little bit slower and it's something to consider as opposed to the Magnum that's just instant out of sprint. These changes alone are already a massive improvement over Reach in Halo 4, and that's not even including the biggest, most important change they made. We've got to talk about the slide. Sliding completely changes the value of Sprint in Halo 5's combat. It allows me to take the momentum that I've gained from Sprint and transfer it into an immediate high-speed launch, which is something that you could not do previously. In the past, if I wanted to shoot out of Sprint or fight out of Sprint, I would have to stop and go back to walking speed and just gain nothing. I got nothing for sprinting around. All I did was just get from point A to point B faster. But sliding allows you to do something with the momentum that you gain from Sprint and convert it into a challenge, convert it into an attack of sorts. And you can not only just slide straight forward, you can slide pretty much within a 180 degree hemisphere around you. As long as you learn how the technique works, you can slide out left, you can slide out right. And it takes time to shoot out of slide. This is the amount of time it takes to shoot at a slide. So there's some learning to understanding when it's safe to slide and, sh you know, timing your shot accordingly. But if you jump, out of slide, you can shoot instantly as well. So I can slide to the right on a dime and shoot instantly around a corner. This completely changes combat. For example, consider this scenario. I'm playing Hardcore Team Slayer on the pit. I'm about to challenge Green Hall and my buddy Batchford is waiting on the other end here. We get into a fight and he's gonna toss a nade and back down. In Halo 3, in this situation, I have no choice but to respect this grenade. I can't just jump over this grenade and try to kill him. If I go for it, I'll probably die. Or if I'm lucky, I might get sent down to no shields, in which case he'll just clean me up for free. He's probably also standing up here with high ground as well, so he's got a huge advantage. So 10 out of 10 times, I should not go for this challenge. I should do something else, like hold my ground, maybe throw a nade of my own, keep my reticle placed, back into the cubby over to my right and get ready over there, or back up entirely, call out the location to my teammates and tell him he's on their green and try to coordinate some sort of a play but basically we can call this situation strategic pacing where the nade in this instance is controlling the pace of play and in order to play properly you have to learn how to play around it all right same type of scenario but halo reach this time my opponent's going to challenge me he fires two shots into me i hit him three times i got a slight shield advantage he backs down he's going to toss a nade all of the options present in the Halo 3 scenario are still the same here. And let's pretend this is the pit. I was having trouble finding it on Halo Reach, but I can back down, I can hold my ground, I can hold, I can go to the cubby on my right, I can throw a nade, etc. But now there's a new option with Halo Reach. Now I can choose to, to speed up the pace of play by sprinting past the grenade toss and going for a challenge right away. However, the issue with Halo Reach is it takes so long for me to shoot out of sprint, I actually put myself at a disadvantage doing this. Now, don't get me wrong. I could have hit my shots here. I probably could have got a trade or maybe even won this fight, though Batchford also misses a shot of his own. He misses the first shot when I come in at him. Basically, what I'm trying to say is Halo Reach's sprint presents a whole new option here, but in execution during gunplay, it's sloppy. It's unreliable. Why go for a sprint challenge if I can't shoot the damn guy at a sprint? There's so much delay coming at a sprint that it seems pointless to go for it, or when I do start shooting the guy at a sprint, then I'm just set back to walking speed. So now we're just having a normal gun fight again, I didn't gain anything for using the sprint mechanic. The best way to challenge around the corner with sprint is to stop sprinting and then just peek out with a normal challenge because then at least I can shoot my gun. So in the end, the sprint just ends up being used to run away from gunfights. It just ends up being used for unskillful tactics that break the flow of gunplay. Now for the same situation, but in Halo 5. The opponent goes for the challenge, I shoot them four times, they shoot me to half shields, I have the advantage in this gunfight, they are backing down, tossing a nade off the wall. All the previous examples in Halo 3 still exist in this situation, but now I can sprint, now I can slide.
Like Halo Reach, in Halo 5's example, sprinting adds a whole new option to combat, but this time around the option is actually smooth and reliable. Skillful use of this technique will reward you in competitive play, and this adds to the gunplay skill gap. Don't think that just because I sprint slid out here and got this nice quick kill that this was just some sort of easy, brainless maneuver. There's a lot of risk and reward at play here. Remember that sprinting resets my shield recharge timer. These shields aren't coming back until I stop sprinting, so this is always a risk that you take on this challenge. Then I have to slide out to the right, and sliding has a delay. You can't shoot instantly out of slide, so it's something to account for unless, of course, you jump, which will allow me to shoot in this case, and then you have to land the precise shot as well. On top of that, it's not like my opponent can can't escape this situation or can't shoot me back. This person could have thrust it away. This person could have, instead of even throwing that, that wall bounce nade to begin with, they could have thrown a ground bounce nade, anticipated that I might have came and challenged quickly, and throwing a ground bounce nade would have blown up earlier right in the doorway and probably would have hurt me and actually, you know, given her the kill. And that's just assuming this is a 1v1 scenario. If this is a 4v4, I'm effectively diving into enemy lines. I'm probably going to get gunned down by this person's teammates unless I'm pushing with my team in a coordinated fashion. Although, in Halo 5, the sprint and the slide are not the only mechanics at play here. There's also the thrust, and I can use the thrust to escape after making an aggressive play. If I can use the thrust well, then I can make myself a pretty hard kill. If I can coordinate the use of thrust in these mechanics with my teammates, then we've got a powerful new strategy. Because of the changes in Halo 5, instead of sprint being used primarily to evade opponents and draw out gunfights, sprint became a lethal tool in combat. A team like Splice showed this perfectly. Mastering the mechanics allowed them to play fast and aggressive, basically flying across the map and taking down their opponents. But the sheer power of these techniques kind of changed the rules of Halo. A game that was traditionally about holding a setup and controlling high ground positions on a map became more about coordinated rushdown strategies, slaying your opponents on one spawn, anticipating the next, and keeping up the pressure, all while baiting and switching and using numbers to your advantage. And honestly, I enjoyed it for what it was. If you've seen my videos, you would know that Sprint is just the tip of the iceberg. Halo 5's combat system is insane insanely deep, insanely satisfying, but they went so far with it and they gave so much power to the player that it does become harder to argue whether or not what we're playing is still Halo or some other crazy sci-fi shooter. This simple example of strategic pacing in classic Halo where because this nade was thrown in this hallway, you as the player have no choice but to stop holding forward and find a different way to combat this situation, either by holding your ground or relying on a teammate, was replaced by this idea that if if I play fast enough, if I react quickly enough, if I hit those buttons precisely enough, nothing can stop me. And as good as it feels to be unstoppable, it's important that a Halo game understands and respects the legacy of classic Halo's simple yet effective formula. Alright, so now that you're armed with all this new knowledge on how Sprint has evolved over the years, now let's look at Halo Infinite Sprint and see what's changed. And honestly, the first thing that I noticed is that it appears to be slower at least slower than Halo 5. It kind of reminds me of Halo 5 Sprint before hitting max speed. Basically, when you hit max speed, these little thrusters kick in on your back, and there's a screen effect on the outside of the screen. Here are the thrusters kicking in right here. Whereas with Halo Infinite, there's no form of thrusters on Chief's back, so you don't get that same sensation of speed when sprinting forward here. But I don't think it's so much that sprint itself is slower, as much as it is that the difference between base movement speed and sprint speed is much smaller. The base movement speed in this game looks faster, snappier, and more responsive than ever, especially with the strafe. The strafe looks very quick and very smooth. Honestly, it looks really great in combat. So a faster, more responsive base movement speed, plus a slight increase in speed that you get from sprinting, on top of the fact that, as far as we can tell, there's no form of thrust in the game just yet, basically tells me that players aren't going to be throwing themselves across the map in this game. The speed overall seems to be pretty close to uniform throughout, make, meaning that maps could be closer quarters. Maps won't really need to be scaled or expanded too much to compensate for differences in movement speeds. Of course, there's the grapple hook, but we also know the grapple hook will be treated as more of a power weapon, so this will have much less of an effect on map sizes and competitive play also. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, okay, so if sprint speed is only slightly faster than base movement speed, then why have sprint at all? Because sprinting lets you slide, and I just spent 10 minutes explaining how slide has a powerful effect on combat and map traversal. So how does the slide work in this game? Well, he's going to go for a sprint slide right here, and it's very smooth, very subtle. He's going to reload and then sprint slide. 
Something interesting to note about this sequence is it looks so quick and clean, it almost seemed like he didn't sprint and slide at all. To the untrained eye, you might have not even noticed that he went for a sprint slide here, but what's interesting from somebody who comes from Halo 5 is he's sliding very fast out of sprint, he, he went into slide very quick at a sprint, and he's shooting very fast out of slide. It seems like he can activate a slide almost immediately out of the sprint animation, even before the animation takes place, and he can shoot almost instantly out of the slide as well. In Halo 5, by comparison, you have to wait till about the tail end of the slide before you can actually fire a shot. I'm mashing trigger here trying to shoot, and there's a period, there's a wait period before I can fire a shot. On top of that, if I go for an early slide, out of sprint, so I try to slide as early as possible out of sprint and before reaching max sprint speed, then the slide isn't very effective. You'll notice the slide isn't really going anywhere, it's not getting much done, as opposed to a full sprint speed slide that's going to send me significantly farther and is much more useful. So looking back at this sequence, not only is he shooting very early out of slide, it looks like even though he's sliding almost immediately after sprinting, he's still getting a boost forward in movement speed for using that slide. So it, it appears that the slide functions as more of an attack now. On top of that, he's, he appears to be doing this slide on a very sharp diagonal. You'll notice he's kind of running. It's as if he's running sideways and sliding sideways at the same time. And of course, we saw that you could do a little bit of this in Halo 5, but what I believe from this sequence is that the slide looks to be more flexible this time around. You can do it on more of a diagonal and more quickly than previously. And it looks like weapons are not only more responsive out of slide, but you shoot instantly out of sprint as well. Right here, he goes for a sprint and then cancels the sprint with a gunshot instantly out of the sprint animation. And this is with the mangler, so I don't know if weapon weight is going to change this. I believe this is the only example I could find. Also, nice little quality of life improvement here. Your reticle is replaced by a white dot while sprinting. So instead of having these wide brackets or no reticle at all, you get an accurate understanding of where you're aiming while sprinting and you can shoot instantly. So really there's no drawback to shooting while sprinting. So now when we go back to this nade in the doorway scenario and imagine this is Halo Infinite, you get this interesting middle ground where you can still go for a sprint slide or sprint slide jump and try to get that exciting aggressive outplay, but you don't have a thrust. So this is super risky. You really have to think twice about whether or not this is a good idea, which means that not playing aggressive and picking a different strategic option is a much more valuable idea as well. Anyway, I think I've said enough today. If you still don't like sprint, I get it, man. It's it's not an original mechanic, and the way it was implemented 10 years ago was just so dissatisfying in gameplay. It just took away a lot of what made combat in Halo so great. Crazy enough, at this point, Sprint has been in Halo longer than it hasn't been. And during that time, it's gone through so many changes, retuning and tweaking and shaping to the point where I think it finally has a valuable place in Halo's sandbox. Now, if you're somebody who played Halo Reach and you hated Sprint, you played Halo 4, you hated Sprint, and you haven't played Halo since, just understand that with Halo Infinite, it's not something they're just slapping onto the game. This is something that they've put a lot of time and thought into tweaking to make it its own unique thing. So try not to knock it before you grind it. It seems like 343 is trying their best to hit a middle ground that has elements of classic Halo that classic fans like and elements of the modern games that the new fans like as well. And it's a bold strategy. Hopefully it succeeds. Let me know in the comments what you think of Halo Infinite so far, what you think of Sprint. I honestly wasn't even planning on making a Sprint video today. I kind of just got lost in the weeds. It was supposed to be about the trailer in general. So if there's anything else in the trailer you want me to talk about, let me know. It looks like we got plenty of time to talk about Infinite because of the whole damn delay, which is unfortunate, but probably for the best. And hopefully that means that we get a bigger, better game on launch when it finally does come out. If you guys want to learn more about any other Halo and prep yourself for Infinite, you pick the right channel. You can hit subscribe above. You can see related videos on my right. Until then, I'll see you next time.